So we've heard time and time again, Ashes of Creation is not a game built for everyone. It's not your next World of Warcraft, it's not your next Guild Wars, it is shaping up to be a pretty niche MMORPG for those guild-oriented, more committed MMORPG players out there who actually enjoy playing with other people and don't mind putting in some risk and some effort into getting those sweet rewards at the end game. Which is fine, because that has been the expectation from day one and it's what most of us expect the game to be. But Ashes of Creation does have potential to bring a whole new generation of MMORPG players into the older school style of the genre in a way that hasn't really been done before in this modern era. And behind all of these systems is one system that could stand out above the rest and potentially reinvent the MMORPG genre if it works. And yes, we are talking about the Node System, a system most recently shown in the latest Ashes of Creation monthly update, which pretty much showed us a bit of the Node Citizen side contributing to the Node, along with the Mayoral side of how the Mayor will be running these Nodes. For those of you who don't know, nodes are really the foundation of Ashes of Creation. Plots of wilderness throughout the world that have the opportunity to build up into massive cities, unlock quest hubs, progress the story, and release waves of content behind their progression such as dungeons, raids, story arcs, mixing up spawn tables for mobs, and crafting, and much more. Something that could really change up how MMOs are thought of in the future with a world where players truly have an impact on what's going on. Throughout this node livestream, we got loads of updates and saw some new details on the systems behind the nodes, and it brings a lot of hype to the fans of the game, but some concern as well as how this system will actually work. In order for nodes to function the way Intrepid plans, they will rely heavily on player interaction and sacrifice. This means sacrificing their time and their resources towards that node as resources from players are required to construct new buildings, along with repairing those in disarray. The way this works is the main of the node can set up what are called buy orders, which essentially says to the citizens, hey, we need these resources so we can make X building. Players can then go out and gather these resources and contribute them to the nodes, and in return, they get what is called node currency, something that we really don't know much about beyond the fact that it cannot be traded with other players. This opens up the question of, is node currency worth the effort it will take and the sacrifice of player resources? Gathering is based in a land management system, where the more you gather resources from one area, the more scarce they can become, really making everything you gather, even the simplest of wood, somewhat valuable and time consuming to hunt down. So in order for players to want to give up those items, especially those more rare ones later in the game, they will want something in equal value or more in return. And we currently have no idea if this node currency is that equal value. It isn't XP and it isn't gold. So in a game that has a fully player run economy, what is going to make you want to give these resources when you could sell them to other players instead? Well, the biggest motivation would be for crafting, because without nodes getting these resources, players aren't going to be able to get high-end workstation for crafting within a node. So you can be selfish and keep these items for yourself and hold out hoping another node and other players will provide the materials needed for these upgraded crafting stations. Or you can contribute to your home and make it worth it in the end. But what happens if you're on a low population server and there just is isn't enough players to contribute effectively to node progression. Does Intrepid reduce the amount of materials it takes on those low populated servers? Which really wouldn't seem fair because in a way it makes the game easier, but those players aren't gonna be able to team up and pool all of their resources into one node because a single node won't have every crafting station. So it's not like people can just all stack up in one. And if players can't get those end game materials or end game armor and weapons on their server, they will probably locate to a new server or quit the game altogether, which could make that server struggle even more. But if Intrepid stays on top of server merges and not putting too many servers out there at launch, then hopefully we won't need to worry about this. There's also the struggle of time. Time is as valuable as any resource in Ashes of Creation. With no fast travel, no exclusive market, resources spread out through different parts of the world and within different seasons of the game, players are going to want to manage their time as well as they do any other part of their character. And I feel because of this, a large amount of people aren't going to want to gather resources to 
sacrificed for node upkeep, as it is going to take away from the valuable time they're spending in the game, along with potentially slowing down their progression with endgame crafting. But if the majority of players also feel the same way, and it's not just one or two players, well, then there are no crafting stations anyways, because nobody's contributing. So if people are lazy, the game is dead. If there aren't enough people in a node to contribute, that node is dead. If the server pops are low and people can't gather resources in a reasonable amount of time, well, no end game goods for that smaller server and they quit or move to a different server. A very dangerous loop of what could happen if nodes aren't paid closely attention to. With nodes tied into absolutely everything, it is going to need a very fine balance and a very fine tuning to make sure that players are staying engaged with these systems, which we already know Intrepid plans on doing, which is part of the whole alpha testing and beta testing process. And as Steven said, he doesn't think that nodes will ever really be done. There will always be some sort of tweaking to the development based on player interaction and how the majority take each server. So while Intrepid has one plan in place on how they will function, players can be unpredictable and those plans may change in Alpha 2. Do you guys think that nodes could potentially turn around and hurt Ashes of Creation? Drop a comment down below and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can then jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. Otherwise, be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come.